I'm Stao Xiang from the University of Southern California. In this video, I will introduce our work, This Unknown, Distilling Unknown Factors for Disentanglement Learning. In generative models, it is often desirable to have disentangled representation in the latent space so that each factor could, could be controlled individually. We may use different methods according to the amount of labels available. On one end, we have unsupervised methods where no labels are known. In such cases, it is in general impossible to enforce the semantics of the latent variables. On the other end, we have fully supervised methods where for each data point, the value of every factor is known. Such methods are simple and reliable, but in real life, it is rare for full labels to be available. Indeed, most problems fall in between the two extremes, where some factors can be easily labeled, but others are difficult to label. For example, in image-based lighting manipulation, we want to change the lighting in an image without affecting other features like shape and albedo. Under laboratory conditions, lighting can be easily controlled and labeled, while the modeling of shape and albedo is a difficult problem on its own. We want to achieve this entanglement when only the lighting is labeled. We propose a solution to this weakly supervised problem, which distills the unknown factor using the labeled factors. Our solution consists of two stages. In the first stage, we want to train an encoder that encodes the unknown factor fully and exclusively. We have the encoder E, the generator G, the classifiers CI, and the labeled factor embedder BI for each labeled factor I. The training is the combination of two branches. In the reconstruction branch, the encoder encodes the input. Code is concatenated with the embedding of the ground truth labels provided by B and sent to the generator. The goal is to minimize the reconstruction loss. In the mismatched branch, the encoder's output is concatenated with the embedding of random labels. The classifiers try to classify the generated samples by their ground truth label, while the encoder tries to prevent the generated samples from being classified correctly. Stage 2 is a multi-conditional generative adversarial network. The unknown encoder E is frozen. The embedders B are replaced with the labeled encoders S, and the classifiers C are replaced with the discriminator D and the adversarial classifiers R. The input X of E and XI prime of each S are independently chosen, and their outputs are concatenated to be the input of G. D is just the GAN discriminator. RI is trained to classify real samples correctly according to the factor I, while at the same time classify generated samples incorrectly. S and G are trained such that the generated samples are classified correctly by R, and such that the unknown code of the generated sample computed by E matches the unknown code of X, or the results of our method on the evaluation dataset. These are the distribution of unknown codes on the 3D shapes dataset, with each of the six factors serving as the unknown factor in turn, and generated images where only the unknown factor is changing. These are generated images on MNIST dataset, with digit class labeled and style unknown. The class codes are sampled from a regular grid and fixed, and the style codes are changing. These are generated images on the 3D chairs dataset, with model labeled and rotation unknown. The rotation codes are sampled from a regular grid and fixed, and the model codes are changing. Now the model codes are randomly sampled and fixed, while the rotation codes are changing. This is the evolution of unknown code distribution during stage 1, colored by azimuth and altitude, respectively. Here are some applications. The first one is phase reenactment. We use landmark-based methods. We train our facial landmark synthesis network with disentangled identity and pose using only identity labels. Using synthesized disentangled landmarks preserves the identity better than using the pose landmarks as is. Similar things can be done for motion retargeting with skeletons. Finally, we show some results on lighting manipulation. For more information, please refer to our paper and visit our project page. Thank you.